So you love math. You're a deeply analytical person. In fact, nothing makes you happier than when both sides of the equation equal each other. Lucky for you, if you're interested in a career in finance, there are a plethora of roles. Now, in finance, there are four titles that math nerds such as yourself are given. Quants, analytics. Now, while that's not a title of an individual, departments have analytics analysts. Strats, or strategists, and financial engineers. Those four titles could apply to a bunch of different divisions. I'm gonna go through three of them today. Keep in mind there are well more than three. I can't go through all of them. These are three very popular ones and three that I've been in or been deeply involved in in my career in finance. The first one is risk management. Now, I'm not talking about being a risk analyst where you sign off on risks of a bank. I'm talking about working on a risk analytics team or being a risk financial engineer. Here you're not just signing off on risks, as I mentioned. You are developing methodologies for calculating risk. When I was at Morgan Stanley in 2013 on the risk IT team, on the technology team, I was tasked with helping the risk analytics team developing a methodology around selecting which historical window they should use for their stress testing models. It was around which time period had the most volatility yet the most relatable. So they used a bunch of different models and methods to figure out which window. And there was a whole project and a program that would run every day that would determine which window was the best for stress testing the current day's risk. That's something that a risk analyst might do. On the buy side, you won't be doing this kind of risk analysis where you're like building risk models big scale ones, unless you're working for a really big firm. I'm talking Two Sigma or Citadel, which for all intents and purposes, it's buy side, but it's kind of like sell side in that it's just a well-oiled, massive behemoth, really hard to get into, and they pay very well. But on most hedge funds, as a risk quant, you're really gonna kind of be in the middle of a bunch of different things. You're gonna do like 33% risk, you'll do 33% like IT liaison type work, and you'll do like 33% working on models with the trading team. It really depends on which hedge fund, but the specific role that you have as a risk quant won't be nearly as detailed and specific, like working on models for this group as working on the sell side. As a math nerd, you might want to be a sales and trading quant. In the sell side, this is the role most previously I had at Morgan Stanley. I did for three and a half years. Our team label were the desk strats. So what exactly did we do? Well, we actually did a ton of stuff. Basically, you're the math slash programming nerds of the sales desk. And that means the sales and traders, they talk to the clients, they execute the trades, but everything else we do. So we build the reports, we automate the reports, we come up with the formulas and the analytics that are going to determine trade decisions. We work on the methodology. So we do a little bit of everything. The work isn't quite as quant heavy as like pure quant roles are, but you have to be pretty good at math. You have to be excellent at programming and you have to understand finance very well. The buy side is actually pretty similar for these desk strat type roles in that you do liaison with IT a lot. Like you'll deal with the sales, you'll deal with the traders, I'm sorry. And when the traders want something and it's a really big project, you will probably put together the specs, write some pseudo code and hand that off to IT. Or you might write the code yourself, prepare the model and then work with IT to kind of link it up to the database. There are just many different directions it can go. It's a very open-ended job. The job specs are not very specific. Me personally, these are the type of roles I love. I think they're really interesting. Every every few months I've learned something completely new. Uh, It was my favorite job of all time. Finally, the money makers. It's an interesting title to give uh, a division, so to speak, but you're the quants who actually make money. On the sell side, there are not actually many of these teams anymore. There are still a few where you write models and that's your main job is just sitting down and and coming up with analytics and coding models. They're much more math heavy than the desk strat roles. There are some market making roles where you're doing similar stuff, but in a much more quant heavy fashion. So there's some of that on the sell side. On the buy side, there are hardcore quants and they just sit and write C++ code all day long There's really no other options. I mean, some of them use Python, but it's really C++ for the powerful hedge funds. And you're just coming up with the models, automated trading systems, writing code, and just trying to beat the market. Ultimately, the quants that do really well on the buy side, they end up becoming quant portfolio managers and they make 
the really big books. There are some honorable mentions that I've left out, and they're mostly new. Human Resources Quants. If you haven't heard of that, you should check it out. It's a new thing. They figure out all sorts of analytics about conduct, type of employees, diversity. It's actually a very math-heavy human resources role, really interesting. And that's spreading through roles that traditionally didn't have quants before, equity research, wealth management. So there are a lot of options that are kind of sprouting out. They're not quite as well-developed as the ones I covered, but they do exist. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some questions. Work hours. In most of the quant roles, your work hours are pretty good. 8, 8.30 in the morning, until 6, 7 p.m. Of course, depends whether you're buy side or sell side, what type of firm, but usually your hours are pretty good. Interestingly enough, working from home tends to make these hours much, much worse. You're kind of owned by your computer and your hours stretch much longer. That's what I've experienced and many that I've talked to as well. Now, if you wanna do the desk strat role that I mentioned, you have to be in probably a little before the sales traders as well. So especially on the sell side, I would get in the office about 6.45 in the morning, which is very normal. And if you have a commute like me, well, I was out heading out to the train at 5 a.m. every day. So that's you kind of have to be a morning person if you wanna be a desk strat. The other roles are, are a little more forgiving. Is the work repetitive? In most quant roles, no. It's really up to you. I mean, you're producing the models, you're doing a lot of programming. If you're stuck on one model for a while, it might feel a little stale, but pretty often it's exciting and there's new stuff going on. As a desk strat, Every day is something new. You have building stuff, you're building reporting projects. Sure, there's stuff you own. I owned all the reporting tools that I built for the desk. If something went wrong or they needed to be further developed, that was my responsibility. I never felt too stale because I always learned new skills while doing it, but also that wasn't my primary responsibility. My primary responsibility was to build out new methods, models, set up new database schemas and all that stuff. So I felt it was very fresh and always exciting. Now, if you work in risk management as a risk analytics quant, that could feel a little stale. Now, again, it's not very repetitive per se, but typically you'll work on this big model for months on end, and it might get a little boring or stale. Are the people nice? I find in pretty much all the quant roles that yes, people are extremely nice and kind. Generally not the most chatty because quants tend to be more book nerd type, which also means less aggressive as individuals. I know you might have met a mean quant in your life. Don't hate me for this, but I find that on most quant teams, people are actually pretty nice. Do the firms you work in matter? Pretty early in your career, it's generally smart to stay with more well-known firms just because it helps you progress your career better. Also on the sell side, typically people stay a little longer than on the buy side. So that might not be true as much, but whatever you do, you're probably gonna be more consistent and, and just stick around with the job for longer and through more career progressions. But it's generally a good idea to have some good firms rather than start as a quant at a no-name firm that might look a little funny on your resume and make it harder to transition to bigger firms. Career progression. So with the exception of the money-making quant, most of it is about time and project management, which is funny because you think quant, you think math, then you know you gotta get things right. It's about the typical career stuff. Project management, time management, communication. This is what you need to progress your career. You show that you're reliable, consistent, and you get your job done and you can own projects and see them to the next level you'll get promoted pretty quickly. Now, the one difference is in the money-making roles. If you're a quant at a hedge fund and your job is to come up with models and you actually produce some really cool models that are making the firms tons of money. I've seen people a few years at a school hit the million dollar mark, own desks, become PMs very quickly just because they were smarter than everyone. So it's just an interesting thing to know. Like if you're not the brightest quant out there, chasing the money-making roles might make it stressful for you in terms of career progression because the smarter quants will typically beat you in terms of making more money. I never was good enough for those roles. And this is not a knock on you. I was never good enough and never wanted to be on the hedge fund side doing a role where I was expected to come up with money-making models. I knew I would never be as good as anyone else doing it, so I never went for it. Exit opportunities. Here, I think, is the best reason to be a quant. Pretty much any quant role is a great exit opportunity to another quant role. What are your skills? Your skills are you understand finance, you're good at math, you're good at programming, you're good at time management, you're good at project management. So the team you're moving to might be working on some derivative that you haven't done yet. What does it matter? You have your stochastic calculus, you have your strong background in math, you're a good programmer. It just doesn't matter that you haven't actually interacted with that derivative yet or been involved in this specific team. As a matter of fact, just to drive this home, so you know I am a career coach, I have a client who was a risk quant working on the sell side in a bank in a pure risk quant role. He was working on models, the slow paced career stuff, and he just got a buy side 
money-making quant role tripled his income on the first year. And like the roles seem to have nothing to do with each other, but you look at his resume and it lists out all the derivatives. It lists out all the time series analysis, all the quant skills, the papers he's written, and all of the pretty impressive models he's built. Okay, this person's reliable. This person's smart, clearly a good programmer. He'll fit great on the team. I think one more I'll touch on is master's degree. And the reason why I'm gonna to touch on this specifically is because Unlike most roles in finance, for the quant roles, you really should get a master's. Now, that doesn't mean you have to start with a master's degree, such as having a financial engineering master's degree or quantitative finance degree. It's not just about the paper. You actually learn incredibly valuable stuff that'll help you in your career. You build a network, and most of these schools actually help you find jobs. I've seen so many people go from 60, 70K jobs, get a financial engineering master's degree, and boom, 150 all in. This actually happens happens, specifically in quant roles. So I strongly suggest getting a master's degree. Some hedge funds actually love PhDs, but a master's degree should be enough in most cases. Uh, one, one last thing on this note is if you were an analyst before, so you got a summer analyst role, either on the desk as a desk strat or in risk management as a risk analyst, if you got that summer analyst role, that will transition you into analyst role, and then you'll get promoted into associate without a master's degree. I still encourage you to do part-time school and get that master's degree because it opens up this whole world of quant to you for later on in your career. So it's just a smart idea, but you could actually start your quant career that way. Whereas in other cases, you might just have to go straight for the master's degree. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified of next week's video. And I'll see you next week.